I look back and I'm like, I don't believe the numbers. I don't think we were ever profitable on Amazon as a retailer, you know, with, with 25 points, 30 points, maybe of gross margin. Amazon's eating most of that. Well, hello, and welcome to another edition of the e-commerce evolution podcast. I'm your host, Brett Curry, CEO of OMG Commerce. And today we have a merchant success story. We're talking to Sean Reyes, the founder of shocksurplus.com. Such a unique story. So many lessons, so many nuggets, so many bold moves that Sean has made and some really unique angles that I think you guys can learn from and apply to your business. And so we're going to dive right into his story. But uh, Sean, uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time. Welcome to the show. And uh, and how's it going? Thanks, Brett. It's uh, it's it's going it's going like a lot of other people are going right now. It's a uh, it's a war in retail, and Dude, uh, you know it is, it is such a war, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. So we're I, we're I experiencing. When I, first, when I first was introduced to e-commerce, so so back in the early days, I did SEO and I did other marketing. I did like local, you know, TV and radio and stuff like that. When I got into working for e-commerce companies, doing mostly search marketing, I remember someone saying. This is like the big leagues, right? Everything, every dollar counts, every little detail matters. Like you mm -hmm. win or lose in the margin, in the, in, in, you know, the, the tiny things. I remember this quote from, um, uh, from, from a military leader. I'm drawing a blank on now uh, who it was, but uh, General MacArthur, Douglas MacArthur, he said, in war, you win or lose, you live or die, and the difference is an eyelash, right? So like it's tiny, and I was yeah. like, man, uh, e-commerce is intense, and but but I love the challenge of that. I love the challenge of kind of being in the big leagues. Mm -hmm. But dude, if anything, and this was like that was like in 2015 or something. Like now, I would say things are even harder. Uh, there's yeah. like more opportunities for growth. So like I think it's a great time to be an entrepreneur, a great great time to be in e-commerce, but it's just difficult, man. Tough sledding for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the margins, uh, you know, everyone's been paying attention to, to margins a lot more um, yeah. in the past couple of years. I, I remember towards the end of 2019, going into 2020, I was really just starting to get a lot more concerned with margins because at that point, we've been, uh, the, the economy has just been growing for 10 years at that point. You're like, just knowing the cycles of, you know, society, it's like you're expecting some kind of a downswing. So, Paying attention to margins, I think a little bit ahead of the curve has has helped us out a bunch. Um, but yeah, it's still it's still number one priority for us. What what are some of the practical things you do to to watch margin to protect you know your 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 profits, your contribution margin, things like that? Any any specific uh, tips or suggestions that you do? In you know, in our 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 cost structure is pretty. Uh, it, it, we're extremely lean. You know, we've got uh, probably about fifteen. We've got about fifteen full time people, and we're doing low eight figures in sales. Um, and so, highly efficient. Um, but even then, you know, margins are still razor thin, right? And um, so, one of the things we've been you know really keeping an eye on is advertising cost. And how mm -hmm. that plays out, right? You, you know, you can, you can swing, uh, two to three points of your total income in advertising costs, right? Um, in a year. Uh, and so you don't, you don't watch that but one bad month. How, how long does it take to claw back the, you know, that one bad month, you know, on toward to the bottom line? So advertising costs is the biggest thing. I'm, I'm very much, I, I definitely wear the hat of, you know, CMO, director of marketing here at Shocks for Plus and just like, the brand voice. And so I'm always just live and die by our marketing and our, and our, uh, ad spend. We are pretty heavy, you know, we are heavily supported by, you know, ad, ads do support a lot of our sales. Um, we're about 60, 40 right now. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to really flip that balance to where we're 60% uh, supported by ads, 40% mm -hmm. uh, by organic. organic or repeat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So we're, I'm trying to flip that balance and really be, have, have the business a lot more supported by our organic traffic, um, and, and kind of those sources. Yeah. I love it, man. And, and I'm a long time ad guy. I've always loved the ad business. I was fascinated by it as a kid watching TV commercials <laughs> that as I kind of grew up, worked in TV, worked in radio. I love it, but I would be the first to jump on your side of the table and say, 
yeah, man, but it's got to produce a predictable return. And in a few points, one direction or another can make a massive impact. So mm -hmm. we can't not spend, but we also can't overspend uh, mm -hmm. because that uh, leads to negative consequences as well. So so any insights there? I'm sure a lot of what you look at is what a lot of people look at, but any, any insights on what are you measuring in terms of your marketing dollars to make sure you're not getting make sure you're not spending too much or too little. Yeah, our biggest thing, one of our, one of the big things for us is like uh, a lot of, so many of our customers are outside the 30 day attribution window because we have yeah, very high, yeah. very high, very high ticket um, sales in the thousand dollar, two thousand dollar, three thousand uh, dollar windows. And we're talking to that customer for months, sometimes even years. Right. And so when you're trying to, when you're trying to reach those customers and understanding like, a lead, you know, lead gen campaign from Facebook, um, like how long that takes to pay back and how that translates to direct search and some of those things. And so we've been really trying to make us, you know, very, very slow migration, not to rock the boat too much, but trying to shift a lot of out of bottom of funnel stuff into uh, more middle and top of funnel. So we really look at a blended ROAS over a long, um, a long timeline. We've also kind of breaking out our spend a lot more specific in terms of like brand line, like um, a very specific type of product and, you know, tracking those sales over a, a 90 or 120 day window. So that's that, you know, that's that perspective and that kind of tactic has has proven to lift our AOV, um, lift uh, specific sales and new segments for us over the past couple of years. And so that's been working extremely well for us, especially trying to, we're really trying to get out of giving Google all the freaking money uh, in the bottom <laughs> of funnel and Google shopping. Like they're the only ones winning there. Yeah. Otherwise it's just, uh, we don't want that price shopper. So we're really trying to move a lot more of our marketing dollars towards, um, you know, to win on brand and to really go after uh, a lot higher AOV customer that, you know, is our, we call our, um, ideal customer profile, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's super smart. And, and listen, I, I love Google shopping. Like this is one of the first things that, that I did to help our yeah. agency grow. And like, I, I wrote the ultimate guide to Google shopping that Shopify published back in 2016 was huge for our agency. Mm -hmm. But again, I would agree with you. Like we can't, you can't just be bottom of funnel. If you're just bottom of funnel, then you're never really going to grow and you potentially just compete on price. And, and then, yeah, you're maybe giving Google too high a percentage. Uh, unlimited, unlimited, uh, yeah, unlimited competition. Every single, every single One day, there's a new com competitor that's just bidding on blue text on a screen, right? Yeah. You can't, yeah, that's, that's just a losing point. game. Yeah. Such a good point. And, and so, uh, and we're, we're going to dig into a couple of things that are really unique, uh, from, for you. Um, Sean, you know, one is like the way you approach organic content and we'll, and we'll love to kind of keep an eye on how you get from 60% ads and 40% content to the reverse of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so you do some really unique things that are going to unpack that. Uh, you broke up with Amazon, so we're going to unpack that as well. And mm -hmm. then you're going to tell that bold story, which which is amazing. And and yeah, but I also like the, the, the fact that you pointed out, hey, this is a pretty long sales cycle. And what I will say, it's clear. In this case, you're selling, you know, shocks and someone's maybe shelling out $4,000 for new shocks for their truck or whatever, yeah. their Jeep. And like, they, they're going to research that. They're going to think about that. They're going to maybe make a couple phone calls. They're going to talk to people in their, in their local market and like check things out before they buy. But one thing we're seeing, uh, even with things like CPG or simple apparel or something, is that there, there's a, a number, there's a cohort of new customers that take longer than you think. Like you look in mm -hmm. your ad mm -hmm. platform and everything's going to show maybe not for you guys, but for other brands, it's going to show, you know, less than a week or less than a day. Mm -hmm. But uh, a buddy of mine, Jeremiah uh, Prummer from, from No Commerce, KNO, they, they do um, post-purchase surveys. They did this uh, uh, study with, with classic, uh, classic, uh, a true classic tease. Oh, yeah. And they found that even 30% of purchasers of true classic tees had um, waited three to 12 months after oh, hearing wow. about the offering before they bought the t-shirts. Wow, okay. Just simple white, black t-shirts, right? So so there, there's yeah. always gonna be a percentage there. I'm sure the, the numbers are, are way more dramatic for you for people that last uh, wait a, lo a lot longer. Um, but yeah, understanding, hey, we gotta feed the funnel a little bit, but we still gotta measure because we can't just, you know, spend a ton of money and hope fingers crossed that it's going to come back in, in mm -hmm. a few months. So, yeah. So what are some of the things you're doing? So you look at a longer window for ROAS, how else are you, 
measuring to both give the media time to close, but still holding it accountable for results? Yeah, we're, I would say we're not even doing a great job on, on measuring that. Um, we do pro, you know, post purchase survey and a lot of our like $2,000, you know, $3,000 customers have basically pegged at six months more, six months or more for the, wow. uh, the research. A lot of anecdotal stuff of like, you know, I remember looking at a, our, our live chat. And a couple of weeks back, I saw that one of the first conversations with one of our customers was two years ago uh, in Whoa. March. And so, you know, that that's it's great to be able to stay top of mind with uh, with these people because we, you know, backtracking a little bit, we're just a retailer. Uh, we're, yeah. we're selling so much of what other people are already selling. We don't have our own brand. That's like the the only place you're going to get it is from us. We don't really ever have exclusive exclusivity deals, and so. Um, for us, it's oh, it's just been building brand from the very beginning of education and, um, you know, trust and knowledge and experience is like our only product. And I feel like we're, that's what we do the best. And so, um, but as far as measuring the long cycle, it's been one of our biggest, um, challenges here to, in order to, we, we know it happens a long time, but <clears throat> through, you know, we, for the listeners, we grew 800% in the past four years. And so crazy, we've been it's just so kind of trying to hold on, not hold. Yeah. We've been a little bit holding on to that growth and trying to, you know, transition away from bottom of funnel stuff where a lot of this growth came from and, and, and migrate more towards longer sales cycles, a less, less addicted to the immediate cash cycle of bottom of funnel stuff. And, you know, being more efficient on the long tail, but also not disrupting the business too much and pulling back too hard, which can happen. And we've, we've seen those consequences before when we try to make shifts too dramatic. Um, but the long, you know, there's so many attribution tools out there right now that just, they actually don't even bother to, to attempt to, uh, track these longer sales cycles or longer windows. They're just like, we can't do it officially. So. Uh, you know, they don't even, they're not even attempting yeah, to use yeah, some most, most are not even trying. Right. And, yeah. and, and that's one, one thing I will say about third party attribution tools. And I, and I do support them and we have a, a few that we yeah. like and, and several that our clients use and stuff, but they are not your savior, right? Like they do not make everything crystal clear. I think they yeah. can make things clearer <laughs> or they can help you triangulate the truth. But uh, to your point, like they don't necessarily solve you know, a six month attribution window, right? What does, yeah. uh, but, but they can be useful in, in some ways. And so, you know, what we've seen some, uh, brands do that have a longer sales cycle is, you know, they're, they're measuring engagements along the way. So, uh, you know, what kind of leads am I collecting? What kind of engagement am I getting with this, with this video and, and how mm-hmm. long are people watching and, and different things like that? Um, that's often what we'll do when we're launching a new YouTube campaign and like the, the beginning, couple weeks or a couple months of a new YouTube campaign are, are mm-hmm. a little rocky. And so we're looking at, okay, how do we make decisions then based on other engagement metrics? So if we're evaluating three or four videos, let's say, you know, we really want to measure uh, both the, the, the view rate uh, and we try to kind of simplify that. And, and we look at, you know, the retention rate on that video. We look at the click through rate on that video, different, mm-hmm. different things like that, that can kind of begin to say, okay, this is, this is sending, this is appealing to our audience is likely sending people back to us. So I- any thoughts yeah. there on like micro conversions or things that you measure? We've been doing, I mean, we've been getting a little, a little bit more aggressive towards, um, <clears throat> uh, on, on YouTube channels, just having, this seems like uh, obviously a no brainer for anyone that like is, is trying to, uh, you know, craft a YouTube strategy. We, we never really, our YouTube strategy out the gate when we started in 2019 was just, Let's just regurgitate all the knowledge we have into a video yeah, format man. with some parts in front of us. And that was our strategy. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, we had a, a number of videos that have crested quarter million views and half a million views, um, for, since the get go. And so, but more recently, we've been a little bit more, um, targeted towards like, here's a landing page for this YouTube video. Uh, let's track the click through rate to the land, you know, Great. doing some of these, you know, in retrospect, very obvious things, but, uh, you know, nowadays it's all the efforts, uh, tracking all the efforts now. Um, cause one thing that I never really took into account before was how much, how much man hour, how many man hours and time has gone into the content in terms of like, you know, backtracking all the way to the very beginning of the conversation of like tracking margin is, 
is what is the true market? What is your true marketing spend? Um, and taking into account your, uh, your manpower, all the content, uh, ma- hours and all the stuff going into, uh, the true cost of your marketing dollars. So, you know, thinking from that perspective, we're a lot tighter now on what the true performance of this video is. Yeah. And are we expecting sales out of it? Or is it just going to be one of those things that we're going to be looking? Hopefully that we start to start building audience, you know, some of the things we've been doing recently is really just trying to get into a new audience that we maybe not have talked to before. And, and so now this, this whole series is a, is a trust building exercise to talk to a new segment that is not our usual bread and butter. Um, and so in that regard, it's like, we're not really tracking the performance there, but we're trying to build these organic pages on our, on our site, build that audience and build authority there. Whereas others, it's like a product reveal or a product uh, release. And then now we're doing discount codes and tracking the discount codes and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we, we segment it um, in, in that in that regard. And we're usually aiming for about a, a video a week on, on a release great. schedule, which feels aggressive. We may be pulling back of there, but um, that's just kind of how much, know- how much knowledge we kind of just want to get out. And it's not fancy videos. It's really just talking heads and some manufactured virality or not manufactured virality, but kind of, uh, manufactured, um, I don't know, a, a head to head versus yeah. this versus yeah. that, you know, brand got versus, it, you know it. what I'm it's saying? So good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and really, man, I think simple there is great. And, and one, one cool thing about your categories, I think it lends itself well to that. Like people really enjoy the research process. Mm-hmm. Uh, before I bought my new, uh, new ish, I guess I've had it for almost two years now, but, uh, a Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. There we go. I was, uh, like I found myself just for entertainment. Like, you know, after the kids go to bed, I'm on YouTube and I'm watching like four, four by four videos, you know? Yeah. And like, uh, and you know, the, the, the Fox shocks are the ones that are on the TRD Pro. And so I was like, yep. And, you know, hey, listen, most of the time I'm just driving the office or try, like, driving around. I'm not I'm not using these shocks. But uh, it was evaluating. I was looking at this versus that. It, it's, just, it's it's fun. It's entertainment. Mm-hmm. But then it also does lead to to purchases. And so yeah. uh, I want to kind of dive into this a little bit. And, and I, it's hopefully my notes here are right. But you guys have like 25,000 subscribers, maybe more. You mm-hmm. said you've got some some uh, videos that you know, quarter million views, whatever. Like you, you've really uh, you've really built this this channel. And so. Uh, yeah, you want to, and I know you already alluded to it a little bit, but, but how are you, um, deciding what content to create and then who's kind of in charge of that? Are you, are you just doing all this content? Do you have a team behind it? How, how does that work? We got a pretty small team. It's, um, it's literally been me and my creative director and a couple guys on staff that like take part in the content. We've had a, we, we we've had a videographer, um, on staff for most of the past five, six years. Um, but we, uh, you know, we sell global brands with, you know, tons and tons of, uh, Google search juice. So they're already, already, already awareness. People are already looking for these shocks. They're looking, yep. they're looking for reviews on these products. So that that's already kind of built in. Yeah. And so it's, uh, they're highly technical products, very much of a black box. Think, think, uh, as a gatekeeping as you can get behind uh, the, the true guts of a product. That's exactly what shock absorbers are and suspension systems are. And it's why I got into the business. I really got into the business to, you know, change, change the industry and change the conversation around this segment of products because I just saw how clueless everybody was back in, you know, 2013 when I first started it. And it's, it's almost become even more, um, confusing with how many different brands there are and what the differences are. So, um, starting with that in mind, there's always, when you're out researching, you're researching Fox or King or this versus that, right? And so we, we know we get those questions all the time through live chat and email. And so for us, when we see, you know, repetitive questions, we're just going to turn that into a video, right? Great. And, and when you have a, when you already have a lot of, um, you know, uh, search behavior on Google for brand A and a lot for brand B. It's you just put them together in a video and boom, your comments explode, your views explode because anyone searching for that is eventually going to see your video. So that was, <clears throat> that's kind of one strategy that we've had since the very beginning. The other strategy is very much like you have a tundra and we know all the shocks available for the tundra. And so we can make a video that's a, a one stop, you know, a one stop kind of uh, research stop, um, for your vehicle to explain all the differences, um, 
you know, talking specifically to the tender customer. So yeah. just those two perspectives have served us like extremely well because um, you get the brand advocates on one side and, and the other and they, you know, go at it in the comments or you, you know, what we hope to do and what we've helped brands do now is if you're trying to enter the market, put yourself up against uh, the incumbent or incumbents because now you're, you know, now you're, uh, you're, you're getting all the exposure based on their existing search history. And so we, we've done that with a couple brands and we, we, I, I would say we blew them up. I mean, we just, just through three, just through, through three YouTube videos and content pieces, we went from basically zero sales, uh, in 2022 to about $1.2 million in sales of this one brand, uh, with only, <laughs> with only $20,000 of like paid, Paid advertising to wow. like promote that content and then the, wow. the content pieces. And so uh, we've kind of proven out that model. Um, and, and we use the, use the strategies I just discussed here for that. And, um, so it, we, it's, we really try to keep it basic. We, yeah. we found that like when we do really well produced stuff, sometimes it works, but oftentimes it's like, it's more of a brand building exercise and people like it, but it's, you know, it's a 5,000 view video or 10,000 view video and not like our 50 to 100,000 view videos when we do the really basic, here's your buyer's guide for a Bronco or here's your, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I, and I think over, a lot of times we overcomplicate things, right? Yeah. Want simple answers. And especially in this, in this case where people are searching for things, they're searching for a head-to-head -head competition or they're searching for a solution for my vehicle, my Bronco or, or whatever. And so... Mm -hmm. Being simple is key. Uh, a, a couple of questions on, on how you approach things. So, so say you're you're comparing, you know, Fox Shocks to King or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. you're comparing two products, and and potentially you sell them both. What's your approach? Because this is a little different since you're a retailer, and it's not like this is my product and these others are not my products. Mm -hmm. Like, are you trying to be a little more neutral, or are you just going like full on? No, this is great. This is not great. Uh, this is really useful. This is when you don't want to buy this thing. Like how, how, how um, transparent or, or yeah. ruthless are you kind of in those evaluations? We're, I think we're both ruthless and transparent. Uh, That's great. One, one of our, one of our mottos is like, we're not trying to tell you what to run. We're trying to help you figure right. out what to run. Yes. Right. Yes. And so that's, that's like kind of, we, we see, we see each, each brand or option as like, it's, they have their own pros and cons and how much does it overlap yep. with your own, with your own thing. And so, you know, we're able to do that because we have so much experience with, with each of these brands that we, that we sell. Um, any, any retailer can, can do this. And I, this, that's what we advise. I've been advising a lot of retailers that do do this. You need to get, you need to get behind the product and use it in, in order for your sales staff to really be able to drive proper recommendations and create the, the, that customer experience that no one else can give. Right. Yeah. And so we, we do it from that perspective. We really try to remain neutral. Um, very rarely is there something that we steer people away from. And we right. have found that if we are doing that, then we're actually just removing it from the site. Cause Got we're, it. you know, it's very much like, well, if we can't recommend this product anymore, I recommend it. why are we selling it at then all? Then why yeah. are we selling it anymore? Totally uh, makes sense. Totally yeah. Makes sense. How, how have you, so if you look back at some of the early days of creating content and I, and I know one of the benefits of YouTube is you create a piece of content years ago, it's probably still getting traffic mm -hmm. and closing sales today. But as you look at those early videos versus what you do now, how have you improved how have you maybe restructured your framework or your approach to videos? Like, how have you gotten better? And kind of the goal here is like, how can we give people, you know, shortcuts or allow them yeah. to, to benefit from your learnings? How are your videos yeah. better now than they were before? Well, before it was, you know, I, it was really, uh, I knew, I knew that I had, uh, that, our team knew that we had experience. Um, our sales proved that we have experience, but like a new person, does it, how, how do you, how, I had conviction. So a lot of people just like, believe, you know, there's a certain amount of people that are just going to believe you based on your yep, conviction, yep, right? They can, they can feel the conviction and they're like, okay, this guy believes and he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. And then there's sometimes where it's just like, but then how do you went on, went over those other people? So the more recent, kind of thing that we're always really thinking about is all the B-roll, all the B-roll to show and prove that we have that experience that drives these recommendations and why we have those recommendations. 
And so we've really gone, uh, I want to say overboard, but as to extreme lengths of having all of the, all the B-rolls of us in the dirt or on the trails or with this vehicle or any of the situations that we're, that we usually always talk about. And so our framework is very much just like we have three major use cases of our product, which is like in the dirt, on the highway or or towing. And so we're always trying to cover those three bases with all of our experiments and tests and then getting it on video. So anytime I'm talking about it or one of our staff talking about it, boom, it's on the screen. So, you know, that just goes such a long way so that because so many people now are using um, stock footage to, yep. you know, yep. in their faceless YouTube videos and you know, just using borrowed, borrowed knowledge and stock footage on, and affiliate marketers is just like, that's like flooding YouTube or Google right now. Right. Yes. And so yes. there's a, there's a, there's very, there's a desire for authenticity. And so yeah. Yeah. that's kind of, I've always had that in mind, just to try to be as genuine as possible, as authentic as possible. Cause I'm also, you know, one of the things I'm really trying to take the audience uh, and learning with us and not, not being like, Hey, I'm a pro and I know everything, but it's like, we're, we're just as clueless about this new product and we're going to learn about it. And you guys get to get to watch us. And so kind of going more in on the experience and the learning and bringing the audience along, um, it has kind of been where we've migrated a little bit to, whereas before I had a little bit of a, a little bit more of an ego as far as like, yeah, I've done this all. You should just trust me. Um, uh, you know, it works for, it works for a little bit. Um, but like, uh, my, my more genuine self is transparent in my ignorance and, um, yeah. Us being and like, let's, let's, let's test this thing, right? Let, let's, let's yeah. put this thing in the dirt. Let's, let's tow something with it. Yeah. See how it does. And I, and I think that adds kind of this little bit of tension too, or a little, little bit of drama or, or intrigue. Like, Hey, how is yeah. this going to turn out? I want to, I want to stick around and watch and, and find out. Yeah. We've had some huge viral pieces of just like, blew up a blew up a shock and it's on instagram live and you know the the brand's like calling my cell phone to take it down and i'm like no i'm not going to <laughs> absolutely not this is gold um can you talk about maybe some pieces of content that you created where you were genuinely surprised at how well it did right where you, you make a piece of content and you're like why did this blow up i don't even i don't get it um well i mean there's i mean i don't I guess, let's see. In retrospect, I don't know why my, one of my very first videos, uh, blew up because I, I was deadpan, just a, a bunch of products on a table. And, yeah. you know, we got like a quarter million views in the first like three months. And that Crazy. it's, it's almost reached uh, a million views at this point. Um, but very basic, very just unassuming. I'm just like, sitting here talking about my vehicle and what I've done with it. And, but it's a Toyota Tacoma. So I knew that I already had a Tacoma but, and it surged in massive popularity. So I already know there's a huge audience there. Yep, yep. Um, there's other stuff where I, we put a lot of work into it. One of our more recent pieces, we put probably three, four, five months of work into it in terms of, you know, assembling the B-roll and doing the script and recording and redoing footage and stuff. And right now it's only at about 10,000 views where we were expecting more of like a yeah. 50 to a hundred thousand view kind of thing. Um, yeah. And it just kind of shows sometimes you, you don't know, right. It's like the, the mm -hmm. piece has to really land. It's got to be answering a question and, and meeting. Yeah. And I actually want to unpack that a little bit more. See if you got any theories as to why that's not taking off mm -hmm. and I'll kind of contrast it with, uh, the, speaking of the, the Tundra, I, I had it serviced not long ago. And when I got it, I uh, realized that the dealership did not reset the maintenance uh, light. So yeah. I was like, it still said maintenance due. So I called the dealership. I'm not very technical. So I called yeah. the dealership um, and the lady of the answer was like, hey, you're welcome to bring it in. So sorry. You can also watch some YouTube videos. It's really, really easy. And so I found this YouTube video. It's of a dude with giant hands. He's holding his cell phone. He's like, click on this, like you scroll here, you click on this and then you click here and then you do this. And it's like, it's the worst shot video ever, but I, but I solved it and it had, I don't know, 50,000 views, maybe yeah. more. Like it was just, it was so simple, but, yeah. it, but it did it like solve my problem quickly. That's mm -hmm. all I wanted, you know? And so, so I was happy. Yeah. Um, in, any thoughts on why did this video that took months to produce and B roll and like really thoughtful creation here? Why do you think it's not taking off like some of the others that are more simple maybe? Yeah, it's a it's a very niche kind of topic. Okay. Um, we thought there would be a little bit more of a broad. Uh, so it's a it's a brand versus brand on the new Ford Bronco, 
And, okay. Uh, Do you love the new Broncos? And so, yeah, they're, they're pretty sweet and we like, we love ours. Um, but I think, you know, part, part of it is the Bronco market and just Broncos content is very saturated. Um, yep, yep. And, and, and so, uh, it, that's one perspective. Uh, another perspective is a lot of those Bronco buyers are not in the, you know, modification mood or mm-hmm. cycle. Usually we see, uh, second, third, fourth owners to be the most, uh, modification, you know, so we kind of knew we uh, kind of, you know, disappoint, you know, uh, expectations are the number one cause of disappointment. So totally, yeah. it was yeah. kind of a soft expectation, but also like no big deal. Cause it's going to live there forever and we'll be, a it's going to live there. It's going to get better over time. Uh, yeah. most likely. So. One, one where we thought, one where we, I knew, or one where I had, I had expectations that matched the actual performance is a, a, B, a versus B versus C of the top three brands in our industry. And that right now is sitting at about 300,000 views. So I, awesome. I kind of, I kind of knew that was going to kick off correctly and it has. Um, so yeah, but that one is very not produced at all. Whereas the 10,000 view one is heavily produced. Yeah. So many great shots, so much work. And, you know, so you see the dichotomy there and you're just like, I've made the decision now for, you know, for the next year, just like, Back to basics. Yep. Let's just let's just translate all this knowledge that's stuck in our brains on simple talking heads and showing the features of the product because that's giving the most value to those people. Totally. Um, totally. You know, to the broadest range of people. So yeah, that's how awesome. we've adapted. So and uh, you and I were kind of talking about this earlier. You know, you guys are just consistent. I think you said you're creating what one piece of content a week. Uh, kind of that that pace. Uh, I enjoy watching Alex Hormozzi videos. You know, he's cranking out. Uh, hundreds of pieces of content across the various the platforms and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's so much about quantity necessarily or quality in the sense of it's got to be highly produced, but I do think there's something about being consistent and being mm-hmm. authentic. How have you created this consistent schedule where you just create videos week in and week out? Yeah. I guess it's probably just part of your culture now, but, but any, any tips there? Like how do you just create this consistent machine? Yeah, we, um, it does take a lot of effort to get, uh, I I was, you know, a few years back, I was very much like, we've got to be more of a media company that sells parts rather than a parts company that does media. Cause I I always felt like once you have the experience of producing valuable content, you could just direct it anywhere, whether we're selling shocks or whatever. Right. So, you know, we use Trello as a project management tool and we have a pretty small team to execute. And I've, I've never been afraid of just like, you know, picking up the camera and just putting it on a tripod and pointing, <laughs> pointing at myself and talking about the things, right? Um, cause we have so much, we have so many customer engagements that I'm like, I'll, I'll look in customer service and find a really good live chat thread and be like, Hey, let's, we gotta, let's, go, let's just go turn this into a three minute YouTube video because we're answering this question all the time. And they always, uh, we're going to get it in the future and the parts are sitting right there in the white house. So let's yeah. just boom, boom, boom. Love so it. I, like quickly identifying this is a video. Let's shoot it now. It's, this is what we do. Exactly. Yeah. So it, the speed, um, the speed and the, you know, no one, no one, so many people are scared of getting in front of the, the camera. Hmm. Right. And, but no one cares. Right, right. Like no the one people that you think are going to care your hair looks or the the tone of your voice as much as you are. None of that. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. No one cares. Just really hone in on your expert expertise of the product or of your brand, and and just try to you know deliver the value to the customer in, in the best way you know how. It could just be a podcast, um, or it could just be written word, right? And so we try to do a bunch of overlap there, um, but speed. But you know when you're when you're inspired to do it. Is when you should, you should do it and just turn on the, the camera to do it because that 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 moment is very fleeting and yep. it, you, when you try to plan for it and you're just like I'm not feeling it I'm not feeling it and soon enough it's just like she's gone you yeah. just lost it yeah just turn on the camera love that so yeah. so I encourage everybody go to the shock surplus YouTube channel check it out consume the content even if you're not in off roading you're not in shocks you're not in modifications whatever. Still check it out and see the way they do things. Look, you know, sort by highest views to lowest and kind of yeah. just learn as you, as you, uh, peruse there. And so, uh, next big topic, and this is a big one. This is going to cause lots of gasps 
people are going to veer off the road as they you know listen to this as they're driving and stuff. But at one time, Sean, if I'm not mistaken, 70% of your revenue came from Amazon, right? So mm-hmm. 70%, let that sink in. And then you, Sean, you broke up with Amazon. You made that 0% of your business. So tell us that story. Why yeah. did you do that? How did that go down? And are you still pleased with that decision? Yeah. So backing up to like 2013, 2013, I started on eBay and, um, we got our start because automotive searching for automotive parts is just a, has always been a pain in the butt. And if you think about like a vehicle and it's shock absorbers, you got two different, two different part numbers on the front, maybe one part number for the front, one part number for the rear. So anyways, your, your customers are having to search for two to three different part numbers for their vehicle in a catalog through some data that these brands just like they engineers so never probably going to get something wrong. Like just, just so, so many, so many, yeah, so exactly. Many so I started, I started listing on eBay back in 2013, just bundles, one click purchase for your vehicle, mm. whether it's lifted or lowered or whatever. So I got my start making just bundles every single day, literally just making bundles until two o'clock in the morning and all these bundles were selling the next day. And so that's how we really exploded on eBay. And then in 2015 ish, 2016 is when we got started on Amazon and we were basically transferred all of our, all of our bundled listings on eBay over to Amazon. And we had a system in place to where we can scale up all these bundles uh, and making these bundles in our, in our catalog. <clears throat> and so we created probably, I don't know, 20,000, 30,000 fresh listings in Amazon wow. that never existed wow. before. Right. Wow. And so we, we got a really nice head start there. Um, and, but then over, you know, 2016, 17, 18, uh, competitors caught wind and started, you know, jumping on all of those listings. And mm-hmm. you got two, three, four people on a same listing and everyone's repricer is now yep. fighting each other. Yep. And now, so we, we were at using the buy box now on something you created. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So the classic, classic story there, um, kind of a, kind of occurred. <clears throat> and, and so we also started doing some experiments of like, well, if well, let's just price Amazon at one ninety nine, and we'll price our website at uh, one eighty nine, so that like anyone price shopping, obviously is going to choose our our website, right? We started we started seeing thresholds there of like, well, if it's one if it's one ninety four, they're still going to choose Amazon because that five dollar delta is like the Amazon trust, it's right? Easier trust, all that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So we started doing some of these experiments, and then we started seeing just how much. Um, or once we got up on Shopify 2.0, um, or once we got over to Shopify in 2018, 2019 is when we launched Shopify. Um, <clears throat> that's when we really started to understand how much, uh, our a- a- Amazon and eBay was cannibalizing our website sales. Yeah. Um, and so once we kind of made that connection, uh, along with, you know, Amazon is a 12% fee. And we were achieving five to six percent, you know, cost per sale on the website through Google. And Great. so, you know, that's one obvious like, well, the fee over here is better for yep. sure. Yep. Uh, and then Amazon started, you know, doing this whole thing of like, don't contact the customer or pe- penalizing you for too much contact with the customer, or you can't see the customer's phone number anymore. You can't text them. There's an intermediary phone number thing. And we're like, oh, that's no good. Yep. And then we start, you know, and then you start to see that Amazon's return rate is 12, 13, 15%. On yeah. Your- Cause you can't contact somebody. You can't confirm that they're getting the right product, right? This is the, again, this yep. is a, a product category where people make mistakes in ordering. And so, so many mistakes. Now you can't help them or fix that, uh, you know, prevent that from happening. Yeah. And they're trying to, they're trying to get you to give free returns and we've got 20, 30 pound products. And so a free t- return means we just lost a ton of money on, yep. on, on 15% of our sales. Uh, and so we have 5%, you know, 5% uh, return rate on our own website. So versus 15% plus all the other administrative, administrative hurdles on Amazon, I, I look back and I'm like, I don't believe the numbers. I don't think we were ever profitable on Amazon wow. as a retailer, you know, yep. With, yep. with 25 points, 30 points, maybe of gross margin, Amazon's eating most enough. of that. 
Yeah. 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 Exactly. Amazon is so making that, money without a doubt. You are probably not. And so, yeah. so when, what was that like when you came to the realization that like, I think I just need to stop this. Like that, that's, yeah, that feels like, and I guess if you realize you're, you're losing money or whatever, uh, but that seemed like a pretty big, bold decision. Yeah. I think, I mean, when we, there was just like, there was a, just a, a string of $2,000, $3,000, like A to Z claims that we have, you know, we just had to eat and it was like, okay, well, we're removing that entire brand. Uh, well, if we remove that whole brand, we should probably remove this whole, uh, it was, so it was just like a slow kind of a slow slide. Um, we were, we we were all competitors were also like basically filing non-genuine product complaints. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, you're always fighting the, literally the administrative state of Amazon, like prove this is, prove this is genuine, prove this is genuine. Right. A to Z here, A to Z there. You're like, oh my God, I don't want to deal with any of this anymore. And, right, right. you know, just the, the math was just so obvious too. We're just yeah, like, well, yeah. if we're the only ones with this in stock, because we would see national supply, I'm like, I know we have stock here. Let's just remove our listing off of Amazon and people are going to buy from our website. Right. Yeah. So we started making those connections a lot more frequently. And so we're like, you know, eventually you just let your Amazon account slide so much that there, you know, there's too much, there's too many hurdles to get back in yeah. good graces yeah. and then good, you know, standings and all, all of that stuff. I, there's like so many hurdles you have to jump through now as right. a, I don't know. I don't even know. I can't speak to too much truth about it. We've really just have not paid attention to it in the past couple of years. And so we may go back um, when we have our own like brand, Branded box, brand, brand registry, and all that. Better margins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen, Amazon's a wonderful place as a shopper. It, it's a way to potentially get growth fast as a brand. But mm-hmm. I'm firmly in the camp of, man, you got to have pretty hefty margins to make Amazon work. And, and yeah, I mean, I think one of the reasons why our Amazon practice is so successful and why we're growing so much as a brand or as an agency with Amazon is because that administrative toll of like just keeping listings up and just, Mm -hmm. you know, fighting with fake reviews and competitors and like keeping, you know, getting listings back up when they're taken down when they should have been taken down. Like that, that's a huge part of what we do. And it's just the, the tax, uh, the cost of doing business on on Amazon. So uh, it's, it can be wonderful for a lot of people, but it's also, uh, a bit of a slog, a bit, bit of yeah. a, a bit of a grind, for sure. and you've got to have a really unique product to not get yeah. copied, also, because yep. yep, like yep, the yep. sell the sellers rank. You know, I know there's there's pl- there are companies out there that just monitor the sales rank, and if you break into a certain threshold, your copy gets outsourced. <laughs> totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, this has been super helpful. So, man, dig into the shock surplus content. Check that out. Learn from that. Hey, don't be afraid to make some bold moves on Amazon. If you got stuff that is not making any money, why are you doing it? Um, what else, Sean, as we kind of move into the, the final portions here of the, of the show, what else are you excited about? Like what, what, what else are you, what, what are some things that are, that you're about to test or, or where you, where are you kind of headed as a brand here in the yeah. coming months? Yeah. Uh, TikTok shop. We're getting TikTok shop kind of, uh, we've been approved for a while now. Um, we have a pretty decent, I mean, we got like 15,000 followers on TikTok and TikTok was, uh, built more, I, you know, we do a lot better on TikTok than we did on Instagram before Instagram, before Instagram copied TikTok as far as yeah. like the, in, the interest graph versus social yeah. graph. And yep. so our TikTok stuff, which is blowing up, which is just like, you know, educating straight to the camera with some, mm-hmm. some action in the background or product in our face. And so we're going to, we're going harder in on TikTok. We're, we're firing up TikTok shop for our own private label brand stuff. Um, Very so. Cool. That's we're, we're we're getting going there um, are, for sure. Are you running TikTok ads as well? Or are you focusing mainly on on organic and and the TikTok shops? Mainly on organic. We we tried ads before, and um, you know, in platform reporting was showing like absurd 10, 10 cent clicks. But what I think was happening, and we see this sometimes. I see this in our Facebook uh, portal as well, which is like you you get a thousand clicks, but you only get. 700 page loads, right? Because 30% of your 30, 50% of your people aren't sticking around past, you know, 1.5 seconds for that page to load. And so, you know, there's, there's that be, I, I noticed that behavior with the TikTok audience quite a bit and we weren't really getting sales and traffic there, but, uh, 
now, so we just use it as a brand building um, kind of situation. We're not doing any 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 paid traffic there just yet. Um, we'll, we'll, I, what we really want to try out is uh, our private label brand and incentivizing through the affiliate kind of the affiliate yep. network yep. And, and giving away, being able to give away, you know, fifteen percent. I don't know what the what we're going to settle on, but try to really go in on the affiliate side of things because uh, the product that the products that we see right now that are available to us, no one else is selling on TikTok as a shop. Nice, and so I think open there's door, point. open opportunity. Love it. I think I think it fits. I think yeah. your product is visual. People are researching it on TikTok. I'm sure, mm -hmm. you know, in similar fashions to what they're doing on on YouTube and stuff. So I think that's a very obvious yep. place to be. Um, Sean, yeah. as you're trying to like uh, draw inspiration from other brands, other retailers, like who are you paying attention to? Who are you? Who are you learning from? Either other brands or other resources? Like how how are you leveling up and getting better? Yeah, Alex Ramosi is. Uh, I it's think he's good. what a legend. He's changed and, he's changed my business a lot. Um, just because you know over the past couple of years, uh, new revenue streams have just been such a important part to like uncover bigger rev revenue streams with bigger margins than what we. You know, e-commerce margins have just been compressed so much, and so we're as we try to like uncover new opportunities. He's been a he's been a really big kind of inspiration for me to like uncover new opportunities, uncover new ways to provide more value to the customer. Understanding, you know, really looking at the business from different perspectives to, to like challenge your beliefs and, and some stuff. So um, he's been a huge inspiration um, and. Totally. legitimately changed my business because uh, totally yeah. we yeah so him and um i don't know I, i've been reading freaking sales tax books like i just describing because <laughs> <Dude, laughs> like that, that will get you some funny looks uh, i'm sure you're, you're reading that you know after yeah. dinner some of you are like why are you reading a sales tax book or yeah the and funny looks yeah yeah, if you're if you think someone else is handling your business's sales tax, think again. Like, yeah. never uh, ever assume someone else is going to handle what what is essentially a, a brand new system for the yeah. entire United States. Like, we're we're talking like no two states are the same on their sales tax administration uh, for your business, and so you can't have one playbook for the whole for all forty five nexuses, right, right. and so that's really bitten us in the butt in the past couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, I've got, we've got people on it right now and it's a lot better going forward, but we're paying the price of past mistakes there. And I know, yeah. like I was saying before, I know nine figure brands that haven't been collecting correctly and they're, they've got, they've got auditors on their door it, step. Like it'd be we need to million take dollars in, in issues that, you know, yep. they got to pay for now. So you got financial burdens, financial hardships, legal burdens and hardships you combine those two that is yep that's not the game you want to play that's not yeah. where you want to be focusing as a, as a brand owner for sure so yes so that's a big that's a big thing i would just advise anyone that like thinks they have it settled to triple yeah. triple check that um totally. you know learn wisdom is learning your lessons from other people and I, i'm the other person that yeah. <laughs> made those mistakes Dude, I, I love it i love it well, well sean as people are watching this listening to this how can they connect with you how can they go buy some shocks if they want, you know, to, to up their off road game? Um, how, yeah. How can they connect? Yeah. Shocksurplus.com. We got live chat there, email. We we're all over the place as shocksurplus.com. I'm on LinkedIn. If you guys, I, know we, I get it after some podcast, people reach out and ask a little bit more specifics. I'm super transparent on all the things we do, the marketing side of things, um, operation side of things, always willing to help out. So yeah, hit me up anywhere you guys want and love to love to help out. It's awesome, man. Really appreciate you being transparent here. Love your story, love the success, and uh, looking forward to watching you continue to grow on the organic side, and, uh, and yeah. best of luck to you in the future. Thanks, man. Really appreciate awesome. it. Thanks, Sean. Tons of fun. And as always, thank you for tuning in. We'd love to hear from you. What would you like to hear more of on the show? If you found this helpful and inspiring, and you know other merchants that would benefit from Sean's wisdom, please share this episode. Also leave us that five-star review if you've not done so already. And with that, until next time, thank you for listening.